Hi and welcome to the fifth part of this tutorial or series in which I'm going to teach you how to create a manga downloader from mangareader.net. Okay, so in the previous video we created all of these string helpers, but I forgot to mention that the, the purposes of these two functions, the purpose of this function is to create a URL to get the website's HTML and then look for the image URL of the of the page and download it into this folder. If we were going to, we're going to start filling this folder with the images of the pages of the episode. So that's it. The next file that we're going to start working on is the mm, the requests. This is going to be the hardest part, the longest of the modules. So keep a keep a keen eye and let's begin. We're going to do a lot of imports here. Okay, so we need to import the newly created string helpers module or file. Everything, we're going to import everything. Also, the global variables and constants. Now, import requests. This is one of the modules that you install with pip. And this library consists of sending HTTP requests over the web so we can store the response in a variable and we can start working with that. We also need Shotil, which is a library included in the Python programming language. We don't need to install it with, with pip. And this do this does advanced file and folders operations. We will actually use this to copy the contents of a file into a into a certain path. We also need to import OS. We're going to use this library to create our directory. I mean the the path. This path is going to be created by this library. This means operating system. So it works on Mac OS, it works on Linux, on Windows. So the first function that we're going to create is the main one that we're going to be repeating over and over again. And it's going to send a request via HTTP. We're going to take the URL that we're going to send the request to and an option that defaults to false. So this binary function is going to set a certain property of the requests.get method, the stream property that I'm going to explain, explain later on. So let's use a try. Okay, so this try keyword here is going to allow us to prevent certain connection errors. And I'm going to do something in case an error happens. And I'm going to create a variable that's going to be the contents of the response when we send a request to the URL using the request module the get method and we use this option called stream equals 
either true or false. It will default false. And this stream property means that it's going to finish until the contents of the requested file or whatever it's going to be returned. For example, we're going to send a request to a JPG file and we're going to wait until all the contents of that remote JPG file are in our machine and then it's going to keep going to the next images because if we if we send a request to the load to the remote image and we set this to false it's going to break and the images are not going to be completed so we need to set this to true that's why we accept a binary uh, option that always default to false so we don't need to set it in most cases so if you want to read about this we can use the documentations for the request but for now trust me that we need to set the stream to true when we send the request to the image so this is what we're going to do in case there's an error while doing this Okay, so in case this fails, we're going to print the a custom error. So it says there was an error during the HTTP request and it's going to exit the command program. But it, if it doesn't fail, it's going to return the request to the to someone or or to the function that requests this function. So let's create the next function that's going to check it's going to take, take the series name as a parameter and the episode number Hmm, something happened here. Oh, yeah, I missed the semicolon. I mean, a colon. Always keep in mind that you have to put a colon after a, a function declaration. So let's create a variable called manga URL and set it equal to get page URL. So this is a function that we set in the string helpers module and if you remember it takes the series name the episode the episode number as a num as a actual number and the page number actually as a number too so let's accept a uh, we send the series name that we passed here and the episode number so it's going to receive the series and the episode and it's going to default to one it's going to assemble the URL it's going to look into the HTML which I'm actually going to request to so we can start using the function that we created here. We're going to send a request to the manga URL, which is the, the URL to the first page. And we only want the raw HTML. And we're going to return a Boolean, which is... So it's going to find the following text. Norfolk text which is here 
is going to find not released inside the HTML. So if the if the manga episode happens to be scheduled for release next or hasn't been released because the series was discontinued, it's going to return a false. Therefore, the program will exit. We also need a function to actually download the image of the page, which is going to be the longest function here. It's going to take the URL to the image that we're going to scrap from the raw HTML using the beautiful sub4 library in the manga.py file, which is the main file. So we're, going, we're also going to accept where to store the image and the page. So this page is the, I believe it's the page number. So let's say create the download, but if it doesn't exist already. So if not, os.path.exists download path. So it's going to use this exists method of the path module. So if this path doesn't exist, I want to create the directory. So always dot make theirs. This is a method to create directories in the download path. We need to assemble So we need to ex to assemble the URL. So img name. No, actually this is not the URL. Is the file path, the full path in the folder. So the image name is at zeros. We need to convert the page number to a string. Actually, let's change this page to page num. We append file text. So if the site you're crawling instead of JPEG uses PNG, you change here to PNG. So you only need to change it in the settings. So okay, it's going to add the trailing zeros to the name. This is going to assemble something like like this, for example. We also need the image path. So it's going to say, for example, um, it's going to assemble the download path. This is the path that we're going to accept is the path already constructed so that's that's why we have this helper here get download path we pass it to this function and we also append the image name which was for example and this is going to be the full path to the file We also need to create a binary file. So we need to create a file with an image extension and what file are we going to create? Well, this one. 
<coughs> we need to decode this. We need to get the decoded contents of the image stream that we're going to download by using this function and setting the stream option to true. We're going to copy that into the new file that we constructed. So how do we do this? We use a snippet that's floating around the internet to download images with open emg underscore path. We opened we opened this path in WB, which is a binary writer. as file path. So this is a variable that's going to be created for us. Oh, I forgot to create a request. So we make a request, but we want the binary data. So the, the loop is going to wait until the stream is already in our system by using the stream equals true option. So request equals send request. We send the request to the URL here. And we need to set this option to true. This is the only time where we set this to true. Okay, so we got our request and we want to decode the contents. So we set this option to true. And we use the shoot till library to copy the file object. We need to grab the raw content of the request, which is actually a JPEG file. Into the new file path, which is already opened in binary writer mode. So all of this gibberish is just creating a full path of an image. It's going to take the contents of the image that we, that we received with requests is going to send those contents to the file and it's going to keep doing this until we already consumed all of the files i mean all the all of the images that correspond to the pages in the episode and then we just print downloaded message from and we add the string page number. So it's going to say currently downloading page number and adds the page number. So this will let the user know that we're downloaded an image. And this is all for the requests file. So if you don't understand something in all of this, let me know in the comment section and I will just answer if I can. So, see you in the next lesson.